What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing to you guys a deck that has piqued my interest for a very very long time but it just got some new support in Battles of Chaos and the consistency has gone through the roof. Like this deck is insanely powerful now. I think this deck is super consistent. You can both combo, you can control the game state and I think this deck is super fun and that deck is Dark Magician. Yep, I'm going Yugi himself for today's video and we're going to be showing off a Dark Magician deck profile. Now, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too, too long. I'm very excited to be showing you guys this, but this deck is super consistent, super powerful, and I think it can compete with today's meta. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and with that, onto the deck profile. Okay, so to start off this profile, of course, we're going to be starting off with the new Battles of Chaos support, and that is Illusion of Chaos. This card is insanely powerful. It brings so much consistency to the deck. And on top of that, this is really what Dark Magician needed to be very, very competitive. Because, of course, we all know Dark Magician was always just a trap-based control deck. However, what this card lets you do is it lets you combo a little bit more. Now, you guys might be saying, wait, but Spanko, you could already combo without this card. Yes, but this card brings so much consistency to the deck where you can always, always combo because any card that you're missing in this deck can pretty much be searched with your illusion of chaos so if you open a magician's rod and you want access to a souls illusion of chaos if you open your souls and you want your magician's rod illusion of chaos this card is so insanely powerful and it gives you access to some really good fusion monsters that you can go into later on in the game but this card is also powerful just because again you're playing such a small monster lineup but any monster you need this is pretty much a fourth, fifth, and sixth copy of that monster. So of course, Triple Illusion of the Chaos, this card is insanely powerful. And then of course, we're playing Triple Magician's Rod. This is of course the only normal summon of the deck, but it is of course the best normal summon in Dark Magician. So you ought to play this. It gets you access to any spell or trap card you need at any moment. So that's why this card is so powerful. And I feel like a lot of people forget about the second effect where you contribute a spellcaster on your side of the field to add this card back to your hand. Why that's really good is one, because it gets you another normal summon on your next turn to get you more searches. But two, putting a Dark Magician in your graveyard is never a bad thing again with something like an eternal soul and let's say you have a dark magical circle set up like this is just giving you more disruption as well as giving you more resources so magician's rod of course you need to be playing three of then of course triple magician souls magician souls like is a one of the best cards in the game right now forget for dark magician just in general this card is so good it gets itself on the field which is really really powerful it can let you draw cards which is also really really powerful and another thing that it does really really well is it gets you your dark magician girl in the graveyard which means your soul servant is always going to let you draw two and then you just this deck has so much consistency so that's what i love about this deck and that's why i think this deck is actually really really competitive in today's format so of course triple magician souls then you're playing one to Maius, the dragon of destiny this card is really good especially turns two and turns three now turns one you can use this card of course but the thing is with this card i know you always want to go first with this deck but when you want to go for game and start pushing for damage this card becomes super super powerful it gives you access to a card like your dark magician the dragon knight and this is really powerful as well because this protects your eternal souls so essentially you're never going to be worried about your eternal soul getting destroyed and getting that second effect where it blows up your field right so this card is really really powerful in that sense and then on top of that this card is also just a big beater 2000 attack and tamayas gives you access to it so that's why this card is so great and then of course you're playing one dark magician girl as well as double dark magician and one red eyes black dragon this is just for dragoon and this is just for magician souls essentially the nice thing is later in the game you can magician souls and send your illusion of chaos and that becomes really powerful because again you have access to something like master of chaos later on in the game so this deck is so consistent it Illusion of Chaos really fixes a lot of the issues this deck has, and I'm really happy this card came out because this deck is very, very viable in today's format. So moving on to the spell cards here, we are playing Triple Dark Magical Circle. This card is insane. One, it's a pot of duality for you. You literally look at the top three cards of your deck, and then you can add a Dark Magician card to your hand, so it's a pot of duality. But the best part about it is, of course, it's disruption on your opponent's turn, especially with something like an Eternal Soul, because at that point, then you get a Banish on your opponent's turn every single time. So this is what I really like about this deck, is because this deck now, with Illusion of Chaos and of course magician souls it's so consistently combos and it makes stuff like dragoon super super early and super super easily but on top of that after you do that essentially what ends up happening is even if you don't combo you just have back row and disruption with dark Mag magical circle and so it's a control deck that can combo it's it's really really good it's like a mid-range deck now essentially but it just has so many different win conditions and that's why i think this deck is so fun so yeah of course dark magical circles are three of then triple soul servant soul servant is really good because it lets you stack a card on top of your deck and you can 
can always get access to that card because it lets you draw the card you stack. That's the best part about this. It's not like you just stack a card and then you hope to get a dark magical circle to get into it or something like that. You can stack any card you need, which can be your dark magical circle. It could also be your magician salvation. And then essentially this card will let you draw. And a lot of the time, if you have a souls and you have your dark magician girl in the graveyard, essentially you can draw two. So you can always draw the card you stack, but then you can always draw an extra card. And if that extra card, let's say happens to be another trap card, then you have so much more advantage at that point. So that's why, of course, you want to play the triple of this. This card is insanely powerful. Then, of course, for the one ups, we're playing one salvation. Always, always searchable when you need it. One secrets of dark magic, one arise fusion, as well as one magicalized fusion. Of course, this is what gets you access to your extra deck. And then Verte, of course, can send any one of these that you need to get access to your dragoon, to get access into any of your dark magician fusions, of course. So that's why this is so powerful. And this package right here is so powerful. You only want one of each. Of course, you don't really want to draw into them. Of course, drawing into them isn't a bad thing, but you don't really want to draw into them because you can always search them and get into them whenever you need right so that's why we're just playing the one of each and then moving on to the trap cards we're playing double eternal soul you only need two because it's always always searchable drawing it is never a bad thing of course as well but it's always searchable so you don't need to max out on this card so two of is just perfectly fine this card is insanely powerful lets you special summon pretty much every single turn a dark magician from your hand or your graveyard so this is the thing with this deck is even if you brick with a dark magician in your hand because dark magician in your hand let's be honest is not great right but even if you brick with something like a dark magician in your hand and you have no other use for it you can eternal soul it's a special summon and again if you have something like a dark magical circle then you get an extra banish so yeah eternal soul of course is such a great card for this deck and then of course with the protection of the dragon knight over here that you can easily get access to with tamayas this card becomes insanely insanely powerful then you of course you're playing triple skill drain now you guys might be thinking but why are you playing skill drain you have so many monster effects in this deck true but because your extra deck consists of so many big monsters the game can just really outright become I have bigger monsters than you, so I'm going to win. And that's why this card is so powerful in Dark Magician, because you don't really need all your effects to go off. If you already have a Dragoon and let's say a Dragon Knight on your side of the field, these are both 3000 attack. If you flip over a skill drain, your opponent is going to have a very difficult time playing through them. And like, how are they going to be over them without effects, right? It's going to be very difficult for them. So sometimes you could just sit on this, control the board. You have big monsters on your side of the board and you can just try to win from there. So skill drain, of course, is a very, very good three of. Then, of course, we're playing triple solemn strike. Honestly, the best trap card in the game. You have to be playing triple solemn strike. Also, this card is really good because it's really good going second. If you set up your solemn strike with any of the other traps that I'm about to show you, then you're pretty much guaranteeing your other traps going off because even in today's format, the meta decks don't really put up negates more so they put up disruptions stuff like dpe you have stuff like scythe now scythe is really strong but again you can play this as a control deck so you're not going to lose to something like scythe which is really really good in this deck as well because you're not going to be sitting there like thinking oh i need to go into my verite i need to go into my dragoon if they scythe lock you it's fine you just set four and you're fine like it's not a big problem but the nice thing about solemn strike is if you're forced to go second a lot of these boards and a lot of the meta decks in today's format do play adventure and the adventure engine will always end on something like a griffin which is at least one negate so even even though they put out multiple disruptions and not necessarily negates, they'll always at least have a one negate, right? So Solemn Strike becomes really, really good going second because you flip something like a torrential tribute, they try to Griffin negate it, and then you flip up a Solemn Strike, and then now their board is going to get broken. And a lot of these decks have a very hard time making their boards again once they're broken. So of course you do want to be playing Triple Solemn Strike. Speaking of Torrential Tribute, you're going to be playing Triple of this as well. This card is insanely powerful, breaks a lot of boards in today's format, of course. Then we're playing Triple Compulse. Now people might be thinking, why are you playing Compulse? Compulse is actually a really, really good trap card. So when you're just looking at it, you're thinking, oh, but it's just a one for one. You're just going to compulse one monster. Well, first of all, that could be really powerful in a lot of situations. But second of all, you can compulse the adventure token. I don't know if you guys knew that, but you can use the compulsory evacuation device on the adventure token, essentially stopping the adventure package. They don't get their griffin on the board. They don't get their adventure stuff going. And then essentially, you're not going to have to play through that adventure package in a game. Of course, you can just use this on any card. It doesn't have to be the adventure package, but it's so strong because if you do do this on the adventure token then essentially they're gonna have a hard time playing their adventure package right so that's why you want to be playing this then i'm actually playing double crackdown now you guys might be thinking why are you playing crackdown i haven't seen this card i haven't honestly seen this card in a lot of trap decks in today's format but i actually think it's really really good in this deck so one like i said you are playing solemn strike so a lot of the time if you crack down if you're going second and you set a crackdown you set a solemn strike you go crack down they'll try to negate it you go solemn strike you're fine right so it's really really good because it, it helps break boards but on top of that this card is also really good at just controlling the game state sometimes your opponent needs that extra monster for the combo to go off sometimes you can crack down an adventure card sometimes you can crack down a lot of these meta decks like
like really play some of the like generically best cards and you can just crack down and take it for yourself right now if they summon a big monster and you go crack down and you just take it then you just have that big monster on your side of the field now of course you can't activate those monsters effects or attack with that monster but the nice thing about having that card on your side of the field is one of course it takes it away from your opponent but two like you are playing link monsters in here as well that you can use that for so now it helps you link climb and that's why i think crackdown is actually very underrated in today's format specifically in dark magician because when you're playing a deck like this that doesn't even play a lot of monsters you don't make a lot of big monster boards anyways so you can use the crackdown take your opponent's monster use those to link climb get into something like your access code etc etc and then go from there so of course yeah we're playing double this speaking of the extra deck let's get into it right now so we're playing double red eyes dragoon now you have to be playing double because you can make double actually funny enough you always make one with your first red eyes fusion but then of course you have access to cards like magicalized fusion and you can banish your red eyes as well as your dark magician to summon a second dragoon if you wanted to so you are playing two of this then you're playing one dark magician the dragon knight of course this card is really powerful it protects your eternal soul you're playing one the dark magicians and you're playing one of the new master of chaos now master of chaos you usually make in your like mid to late game because you have your illusion of chaos like in use and in rotation at that point but this card is also really powerful for you as well so you're playing one of these of course it's just a 3000 beater at the end of the day so if you have this and like a skill drain or you have dark magicians and the skill drain like you're in such a good spot right so that's why this deck is really really powerful multiple win conditions and that's the best part about these kind of decks is that you're not relying on one strategy to win because if one fails you you can keep going with another and that's why this deck is so powerful in my opinion then we're playing of course one mascarena one verte one unicorn one link spider one link karibo one nightmare phoenix just a bunch of toolbox cards here really the one you're going to be going into the most is your verte because you're always going to be going this turn one into your red eyes dragoon so of course you're playing the verte then you're playing one celine of course your deck is all spellcasters so celine is really easy to make and celine gets you access to the access code talker so that's why this is really powerful as well then you're playing one ebon illusion magician as well as one number 11 big guy so that's it for the extra deck that is it for the deck i think this deck is very very powerful very very underrated in today's format and illusion of chaos brings you so much consistency to this deck and i think it's very very powerful so just before we end the video here i want to show you guys a quick two card combo and go over it real quick because this deck is very very consistent like i said and any two cards essentially is going to get you into your dragoon and some follow-up so let's get into it all right, so here is our two card combo. We're opening up Magician's Rod as well as Illusion of Chaos. Now you could also open up Magician's Souls and Illusion of Chaos because your Illusion of Chaos is always gonna search the card that you're missing in this combo. And that's why this combo is so, so consistent. So we're just gonna play this out right here. So you're gonna Illusion of Chaos, get to your Magician's Souls. You're gonna activate your Souls to summon itself out to your side of the field, of course. Then you're gonna summon your Magician's Rod. Your Magician's Rod here is going to search your Soul Servant. Very important that you search your Soul Servant here. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and make Verte into dragoon very simple stuff so you're gonna get into your dragoon here before five summons which means you're not gonna get nibiru here i mean the chances of you getting nibiru in dark magician are very little anyways but you're gonna get your dragoon off right away and then now as you guys can see you have a dark magician as well as a dark magician girl in your graveyard so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna use your soul servant to stack a card on top of your deck so now here we're gonna stack the magician salvation you could also stack dark magical circle it doesn't really matter you can stack one or the other i just want to show you guys how to do this two card combo essentially but you get to stack a card that you need right once you stack that card, you can use your Soul Servant to draw two. Here, we actually ended up drawing into our Dark Magical Circle as our second card. It could be any other card, but it's always going to get you to an extra card. So you can really draw into any other card, and that's what makes this really powerful. Of course, here we drew into the Dark Magical Circle, which is very, very strong. But you're also going to set your Eternal Soul here off of your Magician's Salvation. And why this is really strong is because now on your opponent's turn, you have your Eternal Soul. Here, of course, we drew into Dark Magical Circle. But you have your Eternal Soul to always summon back your Dark Magician. Then you can also use your magician's rod send that dark magician back to the graveyard add this card back to your hand and now you have recursion for next turn and of course you have that red eyes dragoon as disruption and that's really your combo this is a two card combo so you're still gonna have three cards in your hand at this point four cards if you don't count the dark magical circle so you would have four cards in your hand essentially and you're gonna end on this board it's very very powerful i think this deck is very very consistent and i think you guys should try it out yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy so that is my take on how to play Dark Magician post Battles of Chaos. This deck is super consistent. As you guys can see with every hand, you guys will pretty much have a combo, but then you're also running so many trap cards where that, hey, if I don't have my combo and my combo doesn't go off, then I have another win condition. And I think that's what makes this deck super, super competitive. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys have any suggestions, any opinions, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.